Hello. How are you? I hope you be in cool. Let's go back to English now. In this video, I will talk about Rose. Because Rose in my view is out of the current meta in Ellsword now and has many things that need to change for this character. Or unless you want to indirectly delete her from the game because the player didn't want to play her. But that doesn't mean if you do exactly what I say and the problem will be solved, no. This is just my opinion. But my point is, you should take the action for her now before everything become too late or to the point of no return, and you can just look at the rank and your play data. And those data that you have was screaming at you, and need you to look for what happened to that character. And you always say, we didn't have enough data to do anything for this character, and having no data is a major red flag that you need to solve and not something that you keep ignoring. And having no data is a bullshit excuse for someone that has all of the data in hand or has data more than the player on your server and the player that has less data than you can figure out the problem before you can. And if you didn't really have enough data, you just go and find the data not just sitting duck in front of the laptop and farting to your chair and only saying i don't know i don't know keep having the same excuse like we didn't have enough manpower you have enough manpower on the internet how many elseword play wants to provide the data for you to improve your game or how many people want to help you advertise your game and try to make a community for your game it's a lot but you choose to be cocky arrogant and ignorant instead of taking a huge advantage from the player that provides you with many many data that will make a huge benefit for you. Just know how to use the player to your benefit and throw away your ego and pride for the greater good of the game in your team, and it's a win-win. You gain a lot of data from them and they can also get the benefit by making the content with your game. So why not just open your brain more to gain knowledge from the player and take the advantage of it? Well, I didn't make the video to complain to you but to talk about Rose so. Let's continue it in the future video. Well, in this video, I will dig deep into every skill and passive from Rose and make a comment about it. Let's start with her base passive, ECP system and overstrike. Everything looks good. The passive buff from Overstrike is decent. But the one thing that makes Rose become a character that is not newbie friendly is because ECP system. And Rose player will know that Rose without Overstrike buff is like, yeah. You know it, right? Because of that, the overstrike buff must always be maintained in PvE or entered when ready to dish out the damage in PvP. But the problem is the difficulty of maintaining it is very high, and Rose players need to always look at it to can keep up with the other member party to can doing a decent job in both PvE and PvP. And my suggestion is, to change the ECP gauge into two gauges like the Elboy base passive that use the destruction or vitality gauge after using the specific skill. And the ECP system uses the gauge instead of the ECP resource to avoid the problem with the MP reduction trait skill. And also make the overstrike passive to can use the active skill for all rows not just for prime operator. With this, the difficulty for rows players to enter the overstrike passive will drastically decrease. And didn't need to frustrate about getting disturbed by the enemy and need to wait for the gauge fill to can enter the overstrike. Yeah, change the ECP resource to 2 gauge and can be able to use the active skill when in an overstrike state by using the mana. The buff from the skill silver bullet is only useful in PvP, and in PvE, you're not spam commands like in the old days anymore so. Decrease the command damage from 15% to 5% and added the chance to ignore defense when attacking 20% in PvE and 10% in PvP.
Because the movement in Silver Bullet's skill is kind of slow so, change the damage increase to 120% into having super armor. I think barbecue is a decent skill, but the only problem is the end of the movement is slow. Just make this skill can move faster after using skill. I will skip this back step because it's an evasion skill. The damage from this skill is good, but it'd be better if this skill can jump to the enemies like this. Yeah, it'd be fun. Spriggan needs more speed cast and reduce stiffness in the end movement to can move out faster. Yeah, that it. Needle Sobat. This skill was created by the laziness of the developer that just mashed up the old backstep and Needle Sobat together. But I'm okay with it and just added the invisible iframe to the kick. M137 Gatling gun is out of meta and needs to rework, and this is what I want it to be. Yeah, keep the gun hit with the same but change the skill into a regular special active that doesn't need to press X to shoot the gun. Just change it into shoot the bullet like what I show you on the screen with the same bullet damage as skill barbecue. I hope you can imagine it and I'm sorry for my bad drawing. M3 Flamethrower is the worstest skill in the game that I ever seen for a bravery category skill. And yeah, this skill must rework only. And this is what I wish to look like. Shoot the bomb into the air, and boom. Explode Cowabunga and have a hitbox at least can reaching to the third floor of the map. Yeah, and don't forget to give this skill a decent damage for a bravery category's skill. Base Rose is finished now. Let's go to Rose's first path next. This skill is Trash to be honest, if you talk about the vision advantage when charging the cannon. I can just use the widescreen TV when playing Ellsward and I can be able to always see my opponent everywhere on the map. The utility of skill and the overall damage of this skill is also trash when compared to this skill. It has a similar range but the hitbox is so different. The utility, cast time, cooldown time, and damage are also a lot better than cannonball too. Cannonball damage is mostly from the air bullet and its explosion and no one cares about pulling off the full potential of this skill because it's not worth doing that, especially in PvP. No. Both PvP and PvE. Just increasing the damage for this skill to match the hitbox, cast time, and the cooldown of the skill. Especially explosion damage from 1021% to 1242%.
This skill is out of meta and needs to rework, and my suggestion is, to make it shoot the firebomb in the front and have hitbox as I show you in the drawing for one hit. And the utility of the skill is inflict 3x fire debuff to the opponent and damage around 5900 to 6000 percent in PvP and around 2500 to 2900 percent in PvP with 15 seconds of the cooldown and have skill traits with light and heavy. And this kind of skill is the current meta in Ellsward now. That is why I suggest reworking it like this. Stare anti-tank has too much cooldown and the average cooldown for an active skill is 7 seconds. But this skill already has 9 seconds of cooldown and most of the players use the super armor trait which has 10.8 seconds of cooldown and also has shitty damage too. And you can see too much difference when compared to this scam. It already has super armor in it and has a lot more damage than Stair Anti-Tank with just 4 seconds of cooldown. And also has a groggy which is can bypass the super armor. Yeah. If compared Stair Anti-Tank to this skill, Stair Anti-Tank is basically trash so, give Stair Anti-Tank more damage and decrease the cooldown by at least to 6 seconds like an average active skill. I recorded this video with a potato computer, so I don't want a video in the website anymore because it's too lag. So, lock on Stratus, the time stop for this skill is a bit lack. And the time stop for a special active skill in PvP needs to be at least long enough for the character to can move first before the opponent can move at least one second. The damage look makes sense to me because it's a locking target skill but the cooldown is stupid high if compared to other chasing or locking skills. Give this skill more time stop and decrease the cooldown to 10 seconds not this stupid ridiculous 17 seconds of cooldown for just 100 mana skill and it does not make sense at all. This skill is good, and I didn't have any suggestions for it. Just leave it like that and the player will happy with it. This skill is pure trash for its damage and the cast time, but many Rose players love the design of this skill so. Just delete the charging mechanic and increase the damage of this skill to at least 5000% in PvE and 2300% in PvP, and the hitbox also can reach to the second floor. And rework the mod for laser rifle into like lock on stratus skill but not a locking skill and have a bigger laser and more hitbox like this with 2800% of the damage for each hit in PvE and 1400% each hit in PvP. For this skill, I think it's still in the current meta but the normal quantum bomb needs to have an invisible iframe not just stupid super armor for a 300 mana skill. And I'm sure that this idea for a mod quantum bomb might look broken or overpower, but for me, I don't think so. And that idea is make the mod quantum drop the three bomb no matter what the number of the target is, it have only one target. Just give that target a three bomb to the head and the damage is not so broken if compared to another crazy 300 mana skill. Miracle vision buff in PvE looks good. But for me in PvP at least buff it to 40% of the original value or 12%, but most of the buff from other characters that I have read was mostly cut by 50% in PvP. But this skill was cut by almost 70% of the original value so, yeah increase it in PvP is makes sense to me.
And the most important thing is if KOG didn't decide to change the rose base passive like I suggested before. You should change the skill trait of this skill from like to increase the effect of the skill instead. This passive is bruh. It's like trash and useless passive. And mana region was not in the current meta anymore. Because the old Henner era has ended a long time ago now so. My suggestion is to add the mana gain when attack for 20% and attack power for 15% and also cut the value to 40% for in PvP. And the mana region in PvP should be 4 mana per second not that stupid 2 mana per second and additional mana region when holding cannon is 2 mana per second not that 1 mana per second. Or are you afraid that this passive will make this class become too overpowering? Just look at this before saying that and making an unpopular become strong is a way to balance the game so. Nothing wrong with doing this. This skill is like a general active skill in the game and no rose player uses it in both PvE and PvP. My suggestion is to increase some black hole effect to this skill to convince the player to use this skill. This skill damage is not matched the cast time of the skill and the hitbox is really bad for the 300 mana skill. My suggestion is, to make this skill no need to equip the gun. Just make it call the Operation Raise Gun, and then can shoot on its own after using this skill and let the character can move immediately after using the skill. And increase the hitbox to can hit the third floor at the starting point of the skill. And the damage in PvP is nonsense and cutting the value of this skill by 75% in PvP is ridiculous. Cut it to 40% instead not 25%. This skill can be very hard to aim in small bosses or the boss that has high mobility because most small bosses are not always just standing in the same place. My suggestion is... To make this skill can be able to hit the enemy immediately after the bullet was shooting in the air. Yeah, make it easier to hit the enemy. And no need to wait for the bullet to explode on the ground to can apply the debuff will help a lot and cut the damage of this skill down a little bit. I said a little bit not. Cut it to like 30% of the original value, and have the value of it's okay for me. And lastly, the debuff decreases defense from this skill is too low for me after the current balance patch. And 50% is a bit too much I agree with that, but 20% is too low so, 30% is okay for me. Pampero Booster is out of meta now. You might think that this skill is still doing fine in the current meta because of the freezing effect, but I don't think so. Because no one wants to walk and chill and shoot the skill at the enemy without hurrying in PvE. Yeah. The current meta is to press one button to can at least clear the group or even clear the whole room in PvE or can accelerate the damage output by spamming many many skills in raid. And my suggestion is, to make it like the flame strike that I suggested before with the same overall damage and freeze the enemy and added the 3x water debuff for 5 seconds to the enemy in PvE, and freeze the enemy for 3 seconds in PvP. X1 extruder's damage is not matched the cast time in the hitbox. If you compared X1 extruder to the skill ruin from Aisha Void Princess you will see the difference, the damage is similar but the hitbox, black hole effect, and skill trait of ruin skill is a lot better than x1 extruder and look so unfair when you compared these two skills. My suggestion is, option 1. Increase the damage for the skill x1 extruder to 5900% in PvE and 2400% in PvP without calculating over strike and also increase the black hole effect more too.
Option 2. Double the size of the skill and also the black hole effect as well. Booster Cannon has a fair value of the skill damage but the utility of this skill is a bit lack. And you can see the ridiculous difference between Booster Cannon and this Ricochet skill from 4th Path Chung. Just see it and consider how unfair and unbalanced KOG does to this game in this character rose. So, my suggestion is not much but increase the high of the jump of Booster Cannon. Plasma Shock is good in PvE but the damage is only good in PvE not in PvP. And you can see the unbalancedness and unfairness when you compared Plasma Shock with this 300 mana skill that can deal similar damage but also give a ridiculous overpower buff to the party too while Plasma Shock is just a pure damage skill with no support effect but can't even out damage to the support skill. So, my suggestion is, to increase the damage in PvP by cutting the value of the original damage value to 40%, not just this ridiculous 25% of the original value in PvP. And make this skill affected by the attack speed too also. All of Rose first path hyperactive is trash. And you can compare it to the hyperactive from another character like this one that has a ridiculous black hole effect and also has more damage while ancient trigger does not even have a black hole effect and the cast time is also longer too. My suggestion about hyperactive is not much just make this ancient trigger at least equal to the other's hyperactive skill in both utility and the damage. This passive is pure trash. Just decrease the skill cooldown by 2 seconds you can't call this skill a passive skill, it's just trash. And plus 100 mana everyone gets that so. Don't count it as this passive. And my suggestion is, to add the 30% chance of decreasing the cooldown of all skills for 6 seconds. But when in over strike increase the chance to 50% to decrease the cooldown of all skills for 6 seconds. This passive requires 5 skills to max the stack of the buff and the 5 skill in PvP is super hard. Even PvE can be a bit annoying in PvE and making it worth the difficulty is making sense. So. My suggestion is to add 30% chances to ignore defense in PvE and 15% chances to ignore defense in PvP. And don't think that this character must be too overpowered if we do this, so. What? This character is the most under it character in the game and it's nothing wrong with making the most under it that is likely to disappear from the game become so overpowering. And even if you do this, it's just being able to be compared to the top character like Labby, Noah, and Chung. And I want you to do this to make this the most under it character that can keep up with the top 3 character not to outperform those top 3 character. This passive is also ridiculous because of the need to have more than one enemy to can gain critical damage. My suggestion is. To change the condition to gain the critical damage buff from requiring more than one enemy to the enemy that was getting scanned in the range of 700. I think this skill is good, but the homing of this mod skill is a bit bad, and my suggestion is, to make it a more reliable homing system. This skill is good to inflict the element debuff but the damage is a bit lack to me. So, increase the damage to this skill a little bit. Aimed strike damage is okay but not that good and the hitbox is a bit lack. My suggestion is. To change the skill trait from empower to heavy and increase the y-axis hitbox to can at least barely can reach to the second floor without giant trait. Normal burst grenade is good except for the cast time. Just make the character can move faster after uses the skill.
Mod burst grenade is decent, but the cast time is a bit slow and the hitbox is a bit lack for the 300 mana. So, my suggestion is to make the character can move faster after using the skill and change the hitbox from this to this. This passive is decent, but the only thing that I think it's ridiculous is the attack power buff in PvP. And the standard in the action game mostly use 40% of the original value for PvP but this passive gets cut by freaking 90% from the original value and that is ridiculous. And my suggestion is to increase the value of the attack power buff in PvP to 40% of the original value which is 8%, not this stupid 2%. The value of this passive is not matched the difficulty of the condition to can gain the buff from this passive, but when you compare to other character. They just simply gain the buff by just doing nothing and the value of the buff is maybe better than the passive that have a difficulty condition to can gain the passive buff. And my suggestion to this passive is, give the chance to ignore damage reduction to 100% in PvE and 50% in PvP. And the value of the damage reduction in PvE is not that much so why not just make it 100% while you can just give someone 100% ignore defense. Or give a better utility to someone like this and has an easier condition to gain the buff. This hyperactive is terrible because it didn't has an actual black hole effect as the other hyperactive does. And have a complicated hitbox that needs to be relied on to pull or push back the enemy so, this skill is too hard to use. And my suggestion is, to increase more black hole effect when starting to cast and have a sure hitbox and hit that has overall damage of at least 48,000% in PvE and around 5,800% to 6,200% in PvP. The difficulty and the condition for this passive buff are nonsense, and to get critical and maximize, you can just put the sage stone and socket it to your equipment. And Rose's first path was considered the slowest class for Rose's. No. Maybe the slowest class in the game and the stack lost after just 5 seconds to can just maintain the buff that is not worth maintaining is ridiculous. And my suggestion is. To increase the duration to lose the stack to at least 10 seconds and added the all skill damage increase of 30% buff when you get the max stack of this passive. I'm sighing. A lot when looking at all the passive and the skill of this class. And this passive also makes me sigh. And my suggest for this passive is. Increase the activation chance for energy overcharge to 100% and change the nature mana gain debuff into increasing mana when attacking 30% when attacking the enemy that affects by energy overcharge debuff. And for additional explosion damage just delete the reactivation cooldown and change it to have 30% chance to deal additional explosion damage and also increase the value of the additional explosion damage in PvP to 1200% in PvP. And natural mana gain is useless in PvE and even in PvP because you can gain mana by attacking the enemy or getting attacked. And it's no way for everyone can just use the skill immediately when entering the arena. So, preventing the natural MP gain is useless. For the master skill of this class, my suggestion is, to add the black hole effect enough to make the enemy can get hit by the skill all the way to the end of the skill's range. And that is all for the Rose first path. Let's go to the Rose second path. This skill concept is good and has a decent utility for damage, but the chance of double damage is a bit low, and Rose players need to focus on entering the overstrike state to can dealing the damage. 
So, my suggestion is, to increase the chance to do double damage to 50%. This skill is out of meta now, and the skill that needs a long period of time to finish dealing damage is not fit in the current meta anymore. And my suggestion is, to change the skill to like this. And the mod of this skill is a bit lacking damage. Just give this skill some more damage. This skill is kinda bad because of required 10 ECP to maintain the guard instead of just using 35 points of ECP to use this skill. And it can be a little bit messed up when the player wants to enter the over strike by using 2 active. And my suggestion is. To make this skill require 35 points of ECP instead of consuming 10 ECP per second or consuming 1 ECP gauge if you change the passive for Rose Base as I suggested before. And give a sure duration to this skill for 5 seconds and also can cancel the guard by press X to use backstep to cancel the guard. And yes, apply it to the mod of this skill too. The only problem with this skill is, pushes the enemy away in the last hit if presses the skill key again. My suggestion is, to change the push the enemy away to chopping the enemy down and giving a long hit stun to the enemy instead of pushing them away. I don't know how this skill is useful, and in my view, this skill is useless in both PvE and PvP. My suggestion for this skill is, to change this skill into the initiate skill for the PvP like the skill shoulder tackle from Elboy. This skill takes too long to finish and is not worth it to use it to its full potential, and it's better to just spam 2-3 to three skills instead of using this skill to its full potential. My suggestion is to cut the cast time to half. And increase the damage and buff for this skill to match the cast time that was cut in half by increasing the damage by 80% or doubling a damage from the original one and cutting the number of stack. Buff in half and also doubling the buff that gaining from this skill too. The shooting damage for this skill is a bit lack and the evasive shooting is too high. My suggestion for this skill is. To increase the 50% more to shooting damage or from 1100% per shot to 1650% per shot, cut the damage from evasive shooting to 40% or 565%, and for the PvP, cut the value of the damage to 40%, not 30% as you do. And the mod of this skill is a bit lack in damage for the PvP if you compared the damage to this supporting skill. Just cut the value of the damage from this skill to 40% in PvP not 30% including the kick which is 303% per shot and 3698% for a kick. The buff from this skill is a bit lack in PvP, and the PvP in the action game normally cut the value to 40% in PvP from the original value. And the explosion damage in PvP is not so effective because of the low number of the enemy. It's already not effective and you still cut the value of the explosion damage of this skill in PvP to almost 20% of the original which is ridiculous. And my suggestion is, to change the value of this buff to the standard that many action game use which is 40% of the original value in PvP. This passive is decent so, no suggestion for this skill. I do not have a problem with the normal for this skill. But the movement for the mod of this skill makes it risky to use in both PvE and PvP. Just give at least a super armor to this skill or change the skill trait from ignore defense to super armor trait.
and messing up with the ECP usage in the skill trait will mess up Rose player because of can't enter over strike. This skill is out of meta because of has too long a cast time even after buffing the action speed, but it still needs up to 4 seconds to finish the skill. And the boss in the current content can attack through the invisible iframe so, the skill that has a long cast time is not good in the current meta. And the damage in PvP is also too low to can call it a 300 mana skill and cut the damage's value in PvP to 23% is ridiculous. And my suggestion is... To cut the number of hits of this skill to half from 20 to 10, increase the damage for only slashing and rotating slash for 80% to 100%, not including the final slash and lower the value to 40% for PvP, not 23%. For this skill, just make it not push away the enemy in the last hit. And here we go again. You cut the damage value for this skill in PvP to just 17% of the original value which is ridiculous. Lowering the value to 40% in PvP is enough. For the mod of this skill, I don't have any problem with it. This skill is an initiate skill and should have the super armor from the beginning of using this skill not when rushing in only. And delete all the skill traits from this skill to reduce the cooldown and heavy instead. This skill is decent in PvP. The utility of this skill is bruh. Just delete the additional holding and give it decent damage in the higher hitbox that is enough to can clear the dungeon and can do decent damage to the big boss. And here we go again. Another lower than 40% of the original value in PvP against Psy. All hyperactive from this class is bruh. The damage in the hitbox of this skill is also bruh. ANF you can see the difference when you compared with this hyperactive that has more hitbox and damage with similiar casting time. I don't know why Ellsworth's players not figure this out and keep weaning about the breeding debuff doesn't affect the boss while you can just added boss damage in this passive and change the buff in. Festival of Blood have only increased physical attack increase and rest of the buff can be stacked with the successful hit the enemy. Yeah, my suggestion is, to added the boss damage to this passive for 30% and can gain the all speed buff and critical rate buff by successful attack the enemy. And if attack the enemies that was bleeding, will gain the attack power buff. And delete the condition that need to has bleeding debuff to can gain the damga for a chain skill. And also in another special active that using an actual chain into this passive too. And what the hell is that headshot? Needle Sobat, and Western Fire was relate to the chain skill. This passive is also super mess up like the bloody action passive. Just delete the condition that need to have the enemies that has a bleeding debuff into something that can be actual use in every content of the game. And my suggestion is have a 30% chance to inflict the weakened wound by successful attack to the enemies. And change the debuff from MP gain reduction into increase the mana gain 25% when attack the enemies with weakened wound debuff. This game is about to spamming the skill and the old command meta has gone for a long now. Just added the buff that increased the skill damage for 20% that related to shooting skill like moving shot and gun dance and etc. to this passive. This passive is decent, but the condition to can gain this passive is difficult. For me just leave it as that and have another passive that supports to the gaining of festival of blood buff instead. 
This skill looks good in PvP, but in PvE is not good anymore in the current meta and content, and the number of monsters in PvE in the late content is not much compared to the old dungeon. And my suggestion for this skill is, to change the shared damage into the enemy receiving 10% more damage and increase the 20% damage deal for the chain related skill when getting hit by this skill. The damage for this skill is decent, but the utility is a bit hard to use so, my suggestion is to have a chance of 50% to recover the HP when using the skill on a non-bleeding debuff enemy and a 100% chance on the bleeding debuff enemy. The only problem with this skill is the cast time and the damage is kind of lacking for the skill that didn't had any utility. My suggestion is Increase the action speed and add the black hole effect to this skill. Here we go again. For the skill that had a damage value lower than 40% in PvP and has the utility that relates to the bleeding debuff again. So, my suggestion is to increase the value of the damage in PvP to 40%, not 30% and change the utility to can dealing more damage on the enemies that have bleeding passive to increase damage by 30% for this skill when having frenzy buff. This skill is decent, and I have talked about the festival of blood buff that needs to have the passive that was supporting to can stacking the festival of blood buff easier. And this passive skill is for that. Yeah, my suggestion is to add the utility that makes the player can stack the festival of blood buff from the enemies in 1000 range without needing the enemies to have a bleeding debuff. The utility of this skill is bruh. And my suggestion is to delete the cooldown of the blood explosion to have a 20% chance to deal additional damage with blood explosion for 1200% in PvE and 480% in PvP instead. And then change the utility if the chain skill instant kill to deal 30% more damage with chain skill to the enemy that has HP less than 30%. This hyperactive is literally the worst of all hyperactive. Just increase the damage and the have more black hole effect for this hyperactive. The master skill from this class is okay I guess, and no one uses it as a main damage so, I didn't have much to say about the master skill from this class. Alright, let's go to Rose 3rd class next. The damage from this skill is good after the upgrade, but the skill detection is very poor. And my suggestion is, to make this skill enemy's detection better like this. This skill is very hard to use because of the poor hitbox and the damage depends on how good Rosa's player can land this skill to the enemies which makes this skill more difficult, especially in PvP. My suggestion is, to get rid of the difficulty to have a poor hitbox, you need to give an enemy's detection utility to this skill then the player just needs to be close to the enemies enough. And the enemy's detection utility from this skill will aim it for the player instead of manually aimed by the player which is very hard to do. And the value of the damage of this skill is not 40% even after buff it only has 25% value of the original value in PvP so. Just increase the damage value of this skill to 40% which the standard for the action game. This skill is okay. But making the character can move faster after using the skill is better. This skill is only usable in PvP but didn't have any iframe when installing the second mine so. Give the invisible iframe to this skill every time when installing the mine like sword blasting the skill from infinity sword. This skill is decent in PvP if can overlap with the other bullet buff so, it's can be too overpowering if it can be overlapped with another bullet buff. So, my suggestion is, 
To change the utility of this skill to freezing the enemies for 2 seconds for only the first hit and decrease the enemy's water resistance by 60%. And have a 60% chance to inflict ice debuff and a 40% chance for PvP. The damage of this skill is a pure joke. It's a 200 mana skill but the damage is like the 100 mana skill because of the decrease in the number of freezing grenades but the damage is still the same. No they've even nerfed it which is ridiculous. So doubling its damage and having a detection utility as I suggested for the flash grenade and also having an invisible iframe every time when throwing the grenade like the skill sword blaston from infinity sword. For the mod of this skill, change it from throw multiple grenade into throwing two grenade instead. And the player can pressing the skill two time to throw the grenade not make it throw all the two grenade by one click. And inflict the ice debuff in the first hit and can be able to freezing the enemies for 3 seconds in the second hit with the damage of 2800% per grenade in PvE and 40% which is 1120% in PvP. And the hitboxes change into like this. And yeah, has a enemy's detection utility like the flash grenade. The damage of this skill is also a pure joke for the 300 mana and has too long for the skill can finish the damage dealing, but even have a long period of time for dealing damage. The damage when finishing the skill is still a pure joke and the black hole utility is also a joke for the 300 mana skill too. My suggestion is to cut the time for dealing damage to 3 seconds and have an actual black hole effect immediately after using the skill. I said an actual black hole effect not that strutpid black hole of yours. And increase the damage that has the overall damage for at least 18,000% and at least 5,000% for PvP. The mod of this skill also has joke damage when you compared it to this skill that has a larger hitbox and has the support utility but the damage is higher than the pure damage skill without any utility. My suggestion is, to double the damage of this skill or give the utility decreased defense by 40% in PvE and 20% for PvP for this skill, and the damage remains the same. The buff from this skill is kind of good? And what is the benefit of increased aerial movement speed? Just give the all speed buff 10% for this skill buff instead and give the additional buff that reduces the mana to use the aerial movement down for 50%. The buff from this passive is kinda bruh. Just change the cast speed increase and MP cost cut for only musket command and to increase all speed and MP cost cut for the character instead. And the use of nitro motor in PvP is too high. Just cut it down to 5 mana instead of using 10 mana which is ridiculous. The problem with this skill is the mana gain. The mana gain when not having this buff is better when having this buff. And can give too much mana to the opponent because of having multi hit and the damage deal compared to the opponent's mana gain is not worth the risk. But many players use it because of its good catching tool in PvP so, they just take that risk. And my suggestion is, to overlap the mana gained from the shooting command with this skill. This skill is one of the bad designs for this game and this game is an action fantasy game. Not a realistic shooting game. It's bad in both gameplay and the damage and the utility are also bad. Yeah. Everything of this skill is bad. And my suggestion is, to change the skill utility from manually aiming to automatically aim and can shoot at the enemy in range by pressing X and have invisible iframe all the time too with a damage total of at least 14,000% in PvE or 2,800% per hit and 4,900% in PvP or 980% per hit.
The mod of this skill is lacking in damage because the damage was spreading for one hit one target which is 627% damage for 300 mana which is ridiculous, and even a single target. The damage is still very sucks. So, my suggestion is, don't spread the damage for one target one hit and change it to shooting the enemies in the range like this, yeah. Just have hitbox like I drawing for every single hit and have total damage of at least 14,000% in PvE and 4,900% in PvP. What is the purpose of this passive? And what is the point of having a retention time increase and those burn, ice effects? It's so useless to call it passive. And my suggestion is to change the attributed bullet effect to can be able to overlap all of the three attributed bullets but the duration of the three attributed bullet will cut in half if all three attributed bullet was in use. This skill is um. Dot may be useful if have a debuff and the throw range can be 360 degrees like this. And my suggestion is to add the debuff grenade damage to receive 5% per C4 in the throw range can detect the enemies 360 degrees in range and automatically throw to the nearest enemies in range without the need of being manually aimed by the player. For the mod of this skill, leave everything the same and has the grenade damage receive debuff as the normal version of this skill. But my suggestion is to add decrease all speed debuff by 5% per C4 for the mod of this skill because it is very difficult to can hit the enemies without getting close to the enemies while this class is a range class. The damage for this skill overall sucks, and the utility hitbox sucks. So, my suggestion is... To put the damage into the photon blast damage only and no need to share the damage to electromagnetic field and change the hitbox of the electromagnetic field into like this. And also has the invisible iframe until finish the movement not only when shooting. And the damage for the mod of this skill is lack, no. It's lacking in damage for both normal and mod and the damage in PvP of this skill is also less than 40%. And my suggestion is to just increase the damage that enough to makes this skill can clear the mob on the late game content and cut the value of the damage to 40% not less than 40%. This skill should has the super armor in it and no need to has the super armor in the skill trait. Yeah just put the super armor buff for this skill and change the skill trait from gain super armor into evil trait can't mana break instead. For this skill, give a mechanic and the hitbox from the freezing grenade to this skill but has slightly more damage than the freezing grenade. And the debuff for the mod of this skill is inflict burn to all enemies in range and inflict the increased damage receive 20% to all enemies in range if successful make a second hit with less than 2 seconds. This skill is decent. The buff from this passive is decent. But my suggestion is, to add the utility can makes every skill can be use in the midair into this passive. The buff from this passive is also decent. The cast time and the damage for this hyperactive is decent. This skill is kinda bruh. And you should make the character can move faster after using this skill and the chance to inflict bleeding is 100%. The buff from this passive is annoy. Just make it can stack the buff my using the grenade skill instead of that annoy loaded mechanic. The fancy movement from this skill make this skill have a bad the cast time, and the active skill that have a long cast time should has super armor buff, yeah, my suggestion is to give the super armor buff to this skill and have a 50% change to recover 50 mana in PvE but 20% change in PvP. For the mod of this skill, added the utility of have a 50% to decrease all defense by 30% in PvE and 30% for PvP.
For this skill, just make the grenade throw out immediately after using the skill and tightening the hitbox a little bit and also can move faster after using the skill. This passive is very messed up, just change it into this instead. 1. Have a 40% chance in PvE and 30% in PvE to deal additional damage 1200% in PvE and 600% in PvP for all grenades skill. 2. Increase the 50% size for the skill lightweight mine, EMP strom, and C4 remote control. 3. When have all the three attributed bullets, silver bullet, freezing bullet, and blazing bullet buff at the same time, increase the damage for penetrate bullet and photon bomb by 20%. This skill is good but making the flying mechanic become easier would be great. This hyperactive is good. Maybe. The debuff from this passive has not matched the difficulty. And my suggestion is. To change the value of damage received increase to the same as defense decrease and decrease the element resistance to zero. Yes, to zero. And can able to use all the three grenades is hard enough to do in PvP and need to be hit with the three grenades is make it harder in PvP so. Reduce it to zero. And delete that loaded mechanic and change the special active total cooldown decrease 30% in PvE and 15% in PvP by using all three grenades skill. If you change the rose base passive to what I suggest, it's no need for you to care about increasing and lowering the overstrike duration to fit whatever the problem it's. And about this passive, delete the decreases of the overstrike and added the photon bomb to this passive too. And also added the buff to delete the penalty of cut in half duration for 3 attributed bullet buff and give a 40% chance in PvE and 20% chance in PvP to deal ignore defense with the musket skill. And gain the skill damage increase by 20% in PvE and 10% in PvP when having 3 attributed bullet buff. For the master skill of this class, just tighten the grenade hitbox a bit. It's too wide. And that is all for the Rose's third class. Let's go the her final class now. This skill is very hard to use in some bosses. Just make it explode immediately when hit the enemies with 1200% of damage and apply the debuff after getting hit. The concept of this class is spamming the summon robot and then making them explode or just come and attack and leave so. The damage of this skill is good for its casting time. This passive is decent. This skill is decent. This skill is decent in PvP, but I didn't see any difference between the mod version and the normal version of this skill. And my suggestion is to reduce a little of the damage from the mod version and add the leg injury debuff to the enemies. This skill takes too long for dealing with the damage. Just cut the number of the Viper shots from 18 to 7 and double the damage for each shot. And I think the mod of this skill is better. The damage from this skill is literally trash. And my suggestion is, to cut the duration for this skill to stay on the map from 15 seconds to 7 seconds, add the mini hit stun. And triple the damage for each shot. This skill is good. I think. This buff is decent. This buff is decent. This skill is decent, but my opinion is the damage from Gatling should be higher, especially in the mod version. This passive is decent, but what is the point of increasing the ECP cost? Just delete it. This skill is decent, but you should add it invisible iframe when installing because of have too much fancy posting movement. For this skill.
Add an invisible iframe when installing and decrease the duration of frisbee from 7 seconds to 5 seconds and increase the damage in each hit for this skill by 30% or 145% per hit from 112%. This skill has too many hit and mana feeding to the opponent in PvP. Cut the the number of hit from 16 to 8 and double the damage for each hit. Give this skill an invisible iframe when installing and every time when using the skill. For this skill change the hitbox from this. To this. This passive is bruh. Just add the critical rate and the maximized buff by 10% for each summoning unit into this passive. This passive is good. But my suggestion is. Add the utility no longer need ECP or mana to installing the G-Series skill into this passive too. This is hyperactive not a special active. Just make this summon take no damage. This skill is decent. This passive is good. But if you do exactly what I told you in this video. Change the critical rate and maximized buff to mana cost cut by 20% in PvE and 10% in PvP when having a max stack of G extension buff. This skill is decent. Give this skill more x-axis hitboxes and the cast speed to this skill. And also make the character can move faster after using the skill. This passive is a mess. Change it into this instead. 1. Have a 40% chance in PvE and 20% in PvP to deal 320% additional damage when using the skill XS Viper, Sparrow Factory, and Mecha Drop. 2. Give a 50% in both PvE and PvP to deal ignore defense damage for the skill KS83, EZ8 Countdown, and RX78 Landrunner. Increase the action speed for this skill. This passive looks a bit empty to me. Have a chance to inflict the debuff that the player just using the skill focus strike is a bit bruh. To me. One skill slot is not a big deal because prime operators player can circulate the skill with just 2 to 4 skills, and increasing the command damages look good. So, my suggestion is. To change the chance of inflicting stigma from the skill focus strike to increase the attack power by 1% after the use of the mecha type skills and can stack up to 10% in both PvE and PvP. Why both PvE and PvP? Because you can't spam the skill in PvP like in PvE so. Make the buff in PvP the same as in PvE is not wrong. And also added the skill matcha drop into the mecha type skills too. This passive is bruh. Increase the G extension buff and have a chance to max the G extension stack while the player was always switching to stack that buff makes this passive literally useless. Delete these two buffs to this instead. Increase the G skill damage by 30% when having a max stack of the G extension buff. Give this hyperactive a more hitbox. If I was a designer, I will change that flying object from flying around to the rain of satellite instead. And this is all about for the rose rework that I want to suggest to you. After I have gone through all of Rose's skills in this Lwiki and compared them to the other skill of another character, I can tell that, this character got suppressed by the developer or KOG. And after I explore many skills from other characters.
I have never seen the skill from the other character got nerf the value in PvP to like 18% or 30% of the original value in PvP but only seen them at around 36% to 45% from the other character's skills. Yeah, they really don't like this character, and what I telling you is based on what they're doing not from what I imagine. And you can see it in these sign 1. The skill value in the PvP. Rose was the only character that has the value of the skill in PvP at 18% while the other character has an average of 32% to 45% too. Rose is the character that has the most useless passive while most of the character has a decent passive or a good pure buff passive even though that passive look blank but that buff is like increase. 20% attack power while Rose just gets the passive like mana region 6 point per seconds or just decrease a cooldown for 2 seconds. 3. The advertisement for Rose is lacking and I think you will see the picture of the fourth path for every character when entering the Korean website, right? But you never see the picture of Rose that pop up when you enter the Korean website but see another game advertisement instead. 4. You will rarely see Rose on the website and use Rose as a presenter to promote the costume and fashion or the event on the website but you will see mostly Labby and Noah a lot on the website. 5. The irresponsibility toward Rose still keeps on even after Rose's main asks them for the character changing ticket because they get tired of you KOG does not take responsibility and work on Rose properly. 6. Their attitude toward Rose is like, we don't want this character to become overpowering the character but lets other character become overpower as they want. And I know it when they say this after reboot, Rose would be too overpowering if Rose has the same HP and defense as Elboy and that is why we need to nerf her because Rose is a ranged character. And what about Rina, Chung, Ain? They all are ranged characters too but being the range character is not mean shit that much because you got time stop in PvP. And most of the skills in Ellsward have high range skills, unlike the other game that has a mostly close range for a melee character, no. Just open your eye and look at the skill that you made and say whether the skill that you made is a close range or not. Yeah. It's like, if Ellsward was the real world, and KOG was the god. They will create the healthiest child name Labby, Chong, and Noah and put them in the cleanest area that has the best environment in the Ellsward world and has the best welfare for those three children. While they create the human name Rose and becomes the weakest human race because of the failure in the process and tries to get rid of it by sending them to the worst place that was a dirtiest place. That full of polluted radioactive. And the result is, congratulation. You have successful get rid of this character now and the number of roses main was keeping decrease more than decrease and the roses demographic will keep gets worst and worst if you keep ignore this. Major red flag. And lose the percent of the market sell from all roses player is no joke. Maybe that rose player can be the biggest wallet for you so. Who know? Yeah. I just want to tells you about the major red flag that likely to come to you in the future if you keep doing the same as you usual do in every day so. Take the problem about Rose seriously and makes her become stronger is the one way to fix this problem not that music video and the soundtrack of your will help and fix this problem. And don't say that you have no data and what about this video? The data in this video is still not enough for you. What about the information in the balance board? Is it still not enough for you? Well, I'm also get tired from complaining you and you're the one that make a choice. If you want to improve your game more, don't ignore the problem. Focus on fix the problem and improve the community for your game and you have many many player that want to help you improve the game and you can just take the advantage of it by just throw away your ego and listen to the player more. Thank you for watching and have a good day.